I love it, it with the exception of it's all about to fall down. I'm Paula Froelich. Take a journey with me to explore the unknown and discover the unexpected. This is Abroad Abroad. The adventure starts now. Oman may feel like mostly desert, but little pockets of lush green awesomeness exist all over, and they're called wadis. The best thing about driving around Oman is it looks like the moon, and then out of nowhere, there are these little oases, or they call them the wadis. This particular wadi is called Burkat al Maz, and it's located about 100 miles from Muscat. My friend and guide, Kais, showed me around these ancient ruins that are over 500 years old. This is like being in a fairy tale. This town and these houses and these walkways, it's like Arabian Nights come to life. Look at this part. <gasps> it's oh. pulled down six months ago. So how old is this place? It is 500 years old. They built from 16th century. And this people that start moving because they're falling down. For hundreds of years, locals used mud and grass to build their houses. But with constant exposure to wind and rain, they became very unstable. So instead of doing expensive restorations every five years, most people abandoned their homes, making Burkat al Maz pretty much a ghost town. You have to rebuild totally to be sure it's not going to fall down your oh head. Gosh. No wonder yeah. they moved out. I'd yeah. move out too. Be careful, don't go there. <laughs> you can feel the, 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 the floor, the ground. Okay, yeah. you're freaking me out. Just yeah, oh sure. My God. Oh my God, you're, you weigh a lot more, and when you jump up and down, it's going to break. I swear. The threat of collapse aside, these homes do have some advantages. Have you ever seen Star Wars? Star Wars, I think so. Okay, it looks just like the inside of Yoda's house mm -hmm. and Luke Skywalker's house. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm on the planet tattooing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The interior of the home is huge and complete with gorgeous painted wood beams, windows that act like air conditioners, and beautiful staircases. You could almost envision how a family lived here 500 years ago. In fact, I could almost envision myself here too. Almost. It would kind of not be fun to have such a big, beautiful house, but you never know if like the next step you took would be your last because the whole thing would just crumble in on top of you. You feel right. Would I agree with you? Since we were in the middle of the desert, I couldn't help but wonder how the residents of the past and present got their water. This is a water channel system, the irrigation system. It is very clean water there. The water comes from the mountains and collects in the channels, creating an irrigation system called affilage that locals use for bathing and drinking, and perhaps even recreational sporting. Some fish in the water. Oh yeah, there's tadpoles. The few people that still live here not only have fresh water, they've got some surprisingly modern day upgrades. So people are still living in this one, hey? This house, two people are living. You can see they restored their house with the concrete bricks. Right. So as you can see the cement in it. And, and a brand new bathroom door. Exactly. And you can see the dish antennas. You know, you can imagine the village 500 years ago. Oh, you're right. You can see the dish antennas. <laughs> so they can watch BBC and CNN in this, <laughs> in the old house of the ruins. You know? It is kind of amazing that this it's... entire village is wired for cable. Cable and all, I'll take my noisy apartment in New York any day. I don't think that's going to collapse anytime soon. I hope. On the next episode of Abroad Abroad, I don't know if you noticed, but this was a heck of a winter. And one weekend I escaped from the snow for some sandy beaches and sunny skies. Thank God.